What's up? Justin here. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things electronic drum related. Hope you're all having an awesome day. Today I'm breaking down the Cat Percussion Multipad, or as Cat likes to call it at their headquarters, the KTMP1. But I'm not going to remember that, you're not going to remember that, so we're just going to call it the Cat Percussion Multipad. So this pad joins a lot of other pads on the market from Roland, Alesis, Yamaha, even Nord and other companies that make these sorts of things. But what stands apart from this pad is that it's really, really cheap. This thing's $120, and none of the big companies actually sell a product at that price point. The closest I could find was the Alesis sample pad at $180. So this is at the very, very bottom of that price structure. Now I know there's probably companies in China that make something cheaper, but again, none of the major companies actually make anything at this price point. By the way, if you wanna hear a sound demo, I'll link that in the description below. That's not what this video is. This is going to be pros and cons, talking about the playing surface, what it feels like to play, and all that good stuff, whether or not it's actually worth buying. So let's get into it. When you open up the box, you'll find that this thing has four zones on it. The zone separation is very good, no matter how hard you hit near the edge of any of the zones where they connect, you're not gonna accidentally trigger any of the other zone sounds. So there is no crosstalk issue on this pad. It's very sensitive, no matter where you hit it on the pad, you're gonna pick up a sound. And there is a sensitivity control on it as well, so you can dial that in to your heart's content. Now the way this pad handles settings is a little interesting. There is no settings screen menu thing. It's a bunch of red dots that light up. So from this little area of the pad, you can adjust the MIDI note for each one of those zones, the sound level, the volume of each one of those zones, the sensitivity, the panning, and you have two ways to adjust the 50 sounds inside of the sound bank. You can adjust the reverb level to give it like ambience, and you can adjust the tuning. I think it's like five degrees up and down. It's a very limited drum pad. You get 50 sounds, and you can adjust the tuning and the reverb, and that's about it. So if you, if you don't like the sounds inside of this drum pad, you can't buy it because you can't import samples. That's not a feature available on this pad. So just make sure you listen to the sound demo a lot to make sure that you actually like the sounds in this if you're thinking about buying this pad. Now, if we look at the back of the drum pad, you'll notice that you can actually plug in a kick drum pedal and a hi-hat controller pedal. So that's interesting. You can make this into a tiny little drum set. You have your kick drum, your hi-hat, and you can assign each one of those four zones, you know, a tom one sound, a tom three sound, a snare, and a hi-hat sound. So you can at least get your rudiment practices in, even if you're really crunched for space and you need something even smaller than something like an Alesis Nitro or a Roland TD-1 KPX. Now on the back of this drum pad, you'll also notice that there's a USB MIDI port and a MIDI out port. So you can connect this to Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, Addictive Drums, Ableton, whatever program you want. And you can expand the sound palette that way. You just can't import samples directly into the pad itself. You can control it as a MIDI controller though. And I can see a lot of drummers using it like that. They just want something really cheap that they can use with whatever drum program they have on their computer. So that's probably one of the best case uses for this product. You also have the headphone port and the two master out ports. I also need to mention, I did look up pricing for the calf percussion hi-hat controller pedal and this tiny little hockey puck uh, kick drum pedal thing with the bent kick drum beater because you're gonna use your own kick drum pedal, but you're gonna use the beater because it has to hit the floor because that's where the pad is. If you buy both of those, it'll be about 120 bucks or so. So that means if you wanna buy the pad and those pedals, you're just basically doubling the price of this entire setup. So, you know, at that point, you might as well buy an Alesis Nitro. Again, that's just my opinion. But if you're really crunched for space and if you can't even fit an Alesis Nitro, then maybe that would be an option. Now, who exactly is this product for? I don't really imagine many electronic drummers will be buying this because you know it doesn't have a ton of sounds in it. It's pretty small. Uh, I'm thinking maybe more acoustic drummers might buy this. Maybe they want to have a multi-pad to the right or the left of their drum set, but they don't want to spend freaking six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a Roland Octopad or a Roland SPD SX pad. So this is like the cheapest option to get into that, you know. MIDI controller setup for drummers. That's probably the best customer for this. Or again, maybe if you're on a tour bus going from gig to gig, but you still want to get that practice in, play the rudiments, um, you can still have that entire drum setup if you want with the kick drum pedal and the hi-hat controller. 
but it takes up less space than something like an Alesis Nitro. So yeah, that's another case for it. You can mount this to any snare stand if you want. You can go buy really cheap acoustic snare stands. I picked up one from Music Go Around for about 25 bucks or so. And this also has the same mount that most drum modules have on the back of it. So you could mount it just like you would a drum module on a hi-hat stand or a cymbal stand. Uh, Gibraltar actually sells a really cool stand that you can mount most uh, modules on as well. It's only like 70, 80 bucks. I'll leave a picture on the screen right here so you can see what it looks like. If you're seriously considering buying this pad, I recommend saving up an extra $60 and buying an Alesis sample pad. Not the pro version, because that's more expensive, but if you're in this price point, you can literally buy a used Alesis sample pad for $130 on eBay. I see this deal all the time. It's only another $10 and you'll get a used Alesis sample pad. Whatever samples you find on SoundCloud or maybe you record yourself doing a couple of riffs on your guitar or your keyboard, or just whatever you find on the internet, you can assign it to each one of those zones. That way you're never boxed in, you have an unlimited sound palette with that pad. For most people, I recommend saving up a little bit more money and buying the Alesis sample pad, but that's just the way I see it. Hey, if you own this pad or if you've just played it, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in a few. Let's talk about the, uh, yeah, that's my best case scenario. They don't want to spend 700 bucks and buy a Roland SPD-XX. Yeah.